everybody. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to our very first Tech Talk. Uh, never really officially introduced ourselves, so we'll start with myself. My name is Jordan and I'm here with... Jeff. And Jeff is our tech engineer. He's the guy who designs all of our parts and he knows the most out of anybody here. So today we are going to be talking about the 22 plus WRX diverter valve. Just recently released the part. It's hot and fresh. And I think a big question that I myself have and a lot of other people is, what is a diverter valve? A diverter valve is a way for the boost in your system to be relieved every time the throttle closes. Every time you close the throttle under boost, the boost backs up through the system and it has to go someplace. The valve opens, diverts the boost around the turbo so it doesn't just stop the turbo. Without that part, the turbo would just nearly stop spinning and then the response suffers. So every turbo car has that. And there's electronic ones, mechanical ones. Um, so there's a little bit of variance on how that works, but yeah, generally that's it. Okay. And so you mentioned electronic and, and manual ones, or I guess more mechanical. From my understanding, the OEM one is <clears throat> an electronic or ECU controlled diverter valve, yep. whereas ours is going to be a mechanical. Yep. Factory part is electronically controlled. It is an on-off switch. It's closed or it's open. And there's a few maps in the computer that say when to do that. But essentially, it can only be open or closed. Ours, being mechanical, hooks to vacuum in your intake manifold and uses the uh, transition from boost to vacuum to open the valve, which makes the transition of it opening up smoother. It's not an on-off switch. Same thing when you go to get back on boost, it's closing fast or smoother than it is with the electronic one. Um, but it improves the drivability of the car because it's not just instantaneously dumping all the boost in the system every time you start to lift throttle. It is dumping a little bit of boost as you start to back off the throttle. Okay. Or it's as fast as you move the throttle, it will dump more boost. Great. So we did ask a few of you, we reached out on Instagram and we asked a few of you if you had any questions about the diverter valve that we were going to be doing a Q&A style where we'd answer some of your questions. I do have some of those questions here and I think I'd like to start with this one. Uh, what exactly does it do? I think we've kind of touched on this just a little bit in the beginning already. Yeah, you know, the diverter valve, um, maybe ours compared to um, stock is solving a problem of, um, let's say, drivability and then also a boost leak. So one of the benefits of our part over the factory part is that um, this has a plastic seal that's holding boost against, or holding boost in the boost system. Um, and it also has a very strange seal between the piston and the body that leaks. And uh, we took a little video of this showing how much it leaks. We'll show that to you later. Um, but that is the biggest benefit is that it solves a boost leak in the system, which adds a little more power and um, uh, lets your turbo work a little easier. Nobody likes a boost leak. And as Jeff said, we did take a little clip here. Here's our test rig. It shows a boost tube, some couplers and hose connected to the factory um, diverter valve. And we're going to pressurize the system to replicate what uh, your car might see and then show the leak. We're going to go to about 20 pounds of boost and then let off and then you can see how it's dropping, 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 dropping. And that's how much boost it leaks. And blow it back up to 20. So that's the factory part, how much it leaks. Is there a difference between, say, a blow-off valve, which I think we're all pretty familiar with what a blow-off valve is, and a diverter valve? So is there a difference between your standard blow-off valve and you know, a, a diverter valve? In slang terms, no, because a lot of people refer to all these things as blow-off valves, even though a blow-off valve technically, when it vents and opens, it's venting to atmosphere. But everyone throws around blow-off valve for all these parts. So the, the difference really uh, is depending on who you're talking to. Um, but a part that might normally be considered a blow-off valve would open up and all that boost would be released to the atmosphere. And 
a diverter valve is diverting that boost back into the turbo again. It's bad to vent into atmosphere because your ECU is reading how much air is entering the engine and the moment you release air outside of the system, it doesn't know that and it causes the car to run rich, kind of stumble, can have some weird problems. That's why there's blow off valves, diverter valves that are 50-50. They, they blow some of it off back to the intake. Some well, and, that, and that's going to be similar to our standard blow off valves that we have for the 15 plus WRXs where it's a recirculating blow off valve rather yeah. than a vent atmosphere. Yeah, we call it a blow off valve, but it really is a recirculating yeah. diverter valve, blow off, you know, yeah. It's easier to just call it the same and say it is recirculating 100% of the air or not. So I know we're, we're talking about recirculating, venting the atmosphere, and for those of you that don't know, uh, a blow-off valve that vents to atmosphere is what's going to give you those super cool, you know, noises and, and sounds that everybody shoots to, to have with their blow-off valve. Exactly. I know people are going to wonder and ask, does the diverter valve make any sound? On a stock intake, stock car, no. There is no sound. You're going to buy it because of the performance and the drivability. But if you have an intake... 100% you will hear it. You will absolutely hear it. It makes a it's kind of the cool, normal psh sound. And cool. Yeah, definitely. Well, so there you go. Buy an intake. If, if you don't have an intake, get an intake and then get the diverter valve. All right, another question we've got. What's the benefit of upgrading to the Perrin diverter valve? Um, back to the boost leak and the drivability. That's an easy one. Um, sure. Solving the boost leak, drivability makes it better. I would say compared to other people that make them, our part is simple. It has three parts, piston, spring, and a cap. Um, not, not a lot to go wrong. Um, not a lot of, there's nothing to wear out. Um, the piston on it is a rubber piston, so it seals perfectly to the turbo. So yeah. And when we're referring to a, a, a simple part, this is essentially your, your three main components of yep. Our diverter valve opposed to you know this is your oem one it's quite heavy i mean not like you're buying the diverter valve for a big you know weight reduction but no. definitely a more simplicated design than what subaru decided to go with yep <laughs> so we've we've touched on the the general basis of a diverter valve what it is what it does um, some of the performance differences between the OEM diverter valve and upgrading to our diverter valve. Uh, we, we touched base on this a little bit already, but I, I still want to ask the question. Uh, the stock one is ECU controlled, and uh, someone was wondering, how does this one work? So I guess going back to the kind of just going over the electronically controlled diverter valve versus ours, which is, I believe, controlled by vacuum pressure, correct? Yep. Okay. Well, the factory part, the ECU just sends a signal to it. It opens this little valve up. Ours has this piston with the spring behind it, and the vacuum pulls that valve away and releases the pressure. Um, it's really as simple as that. Previous turbocharged engines might have used mechanical blow off valves and uh, OEMs have gone away from this to get rid of hoses and other things that they need in favor of something electronic, which is wires and cheap. Um, but the mechanical versions, uh, I think work better. They're smoother, they're more predictable. Um, if you haven't seen our previous video on our, you know, what's in the box with the diverter valve, I do go over everything that you get in the box and a few details of the part, but a few things that I'd like to touch on. Uh, always keep in mind that we are machining all of our parts in-house. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but these are machined out of billet aluminum, correct? Yep. Uh, right here in-house. A lot of people aren't aware. We're located right here in Hillsboro, Oregon. And we are going to have a nice red anodized finish on these. So it's long lasting, it's durable, it's corrosion resistant, and we do like to keep as much as we can right here in the US of A, which is fantastic. But anything that you feel as though we've maybe missed out on that everybody should know? I don't think so. All right. 
Thank you guys so much for tuning in to our first ever Tech Talk. Make sure to subscribe, maybe click the bell if you'd like to stay in the loop on our latest videos that we're dropping. And we've got some stuff in the works, so make sure you're following us on Instagram as well to kind of check in on new part releases and stuff that's coming down the pipeline. So until next time, if you guys like the video, y'all know what to do.